Welcome to Ellis B. Feaster's Radio Air Check and Classic TV Channel. Sale ends May 1st. See store for details. Prices may vary in Alaska. Why import and retail? Got a couple of minutes to go now before 7 o'clock in the morning. I'm Pat Cashman. Lisa Foster is here. As you mentioned that uh, smell under your sink, Lisa, it reminded me of my bachelor days. And uh, I, I say no more. Well, I know, but I, <laughs> but I had a uh, I had a, uh, a garbage disposal in this uh, apartment that I was renting. I was living by myself, and uh, I can't remember what I stuck in there. I stuck a bunch of stuff in there, and it stopped. It just ground to a halt, and it would not run, and it would not dispose of whatever it was. I had some food product I had in there. Uh huh. And so so what did you do? Well, I couldn't fix it. I tried to hammer on it. And I, there's nothing I could do. I couldn't get it. So you again. left it? So I left it. Oh. <laughs> I didn't know what else to do. A couple days go by. A couple weeks go by. And it really, I guess, is just horrible in there. But, you know, I lived there. I didn't notice it. My girlfriend, today my wife, came over there to visit me. She walks in the room and goes, oh, my gosh. Oh, where's that coming from? I said, it's all the garbage disposal thing over there. So I go over to the garbage disposal and show her, and she says, let me show you something, Pat. She opens up the, the, the doors underneath the mm -hmm. sink and says, see this red button here on the garbage disposal? That's a reset button. You just push that thing. Oh, for gosh sakes. Well, that's great. Thanks, honey. Mm, that smells better in here already. That was pretty bright. Yeah. Hey, Ann, will you go on the cruise with us? Uh, no. Okay. We have a rollover accident in Puyallup, westbound 512 east of Pioneer, and uh, that one is uh, blocking one of the lanes. And I'm Ann Silverman on the Buzz 100.7 FM. Uh, maybe take a little more time and really think it over, okay? Yeah. No. We'd love to have you come with us. 7 o'clock, KIROFM Seattle, 100.7. <laughs> CBS News, I'm Bill Whitney. General Motors may have just begun a struggle with the UAW just weeks after settling a strike that virtually halted production. GM's pushing for greater productivity at 14 more plants, including the Delphi plant in Livonia, Michigan. A second heart attack. He was only as directed. The penalty phase of the Menendez trial is drawing to a close. Correspondent David Dow is covering in Los Angeles. I'm Bill Whitney, CBS News. <laughs> Nothing more than feelings, feelings, feelings. Need a sledgehammer? Go to the base. Home base. This weekend, every Washington home base is celebrating the grand opening of the newly remodeled stores in Lacey, Tacoma, Silverdale, and Bellingham. Go to the base. Home base. Six minutes past seven. Dustin Hornby on the bongos. Actually, truth be told, we don't even have a set of bongos here in the studio. He's doing that on his stomach. Listen to that. And he's wearing a shirt and a sweater at that. If you want to try and do this, kids, you cannot eat for three days. You need a nice, big, empty stomach. And you need a large one, too. The love handles make nice maracas, too. Or so the Germans would have us believe. Let's check traffic. Here's Ann Silverman. We're seeing more and more slowdowns southbound on 405 as you head towards Totem Lake. Highs of 55. I'm Ann Silverman on the buzz, 100.7 FM. Thanks very much, Ann. Boy, that was quite a little uh, musical treat there, Dustin. Yeah, Pat, thank you. Talented man on the abdomen. Thank you, sir. Mm, they, I love they this call, They call them the skins. Lisa, why don't you yeah. take a turn at uh, displaying a little talent for us? Just go la 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 or something like that, Lisa, in here. Lisa? Uh, Li Lisa? Lisa! What? I'm sorry, but we have to get on with the show. 
It was that was lovely, but I didn't think it was I ever going. I was in mid. I, I was know. Mid one of those. I know. You know was, how hard that is to cut that I, off. I know. I'm sorry, but I, we had to have to move on with the show. And even now, as I'm you're saying, so selfish. Sometimes you let Dustin no. play his whole tummy song, and never mind. God, I was just getting into it, too, didn't you think? Yeah, yeah, that's what I was worried about. Mm. That's why I decided we should head that one off. Oh, well, it, uh, now that I abruptly cut you off, I can't remember what I was going to mention. <laughs> Oh, guess there is nothing. Guess there is nothing to talk about. Nothing to talk about at all. Hey, uh, I'll tell you something. Um, you have uh, you got a band aid on your finger, and you have been working hard, haven't you? Getting your house fixed up. I have been working major hard, major hard. I, I it's been like having two jobs. I mean, you know, I dash right out of here. Oh yeah. After the show, and you, I'm off doing something. You hit the bricks. You're not wor you're not I working know. any overtime at this place. I know. That's for sure. I hit the bricks. Hasn't escaped anybody's notice. I didn't think it had. Yeah. But I do skedaddle out of here and go right over there and work pretty much all day over at, at, at the new house. Now, you're not just doing little cleaning no, tasks. No. You're putting a floor. I mean, you're doing big, complicated things, aren't Re you? Yeah. Rewiring the electrical and, and all, just everything you can possibly imagine. It's being done. And I was just thinking this right thought. Is there any light at the end of this tunnel? That's what I was wondering. But I, I was ho I was I was thinking, you know what? May is coming up. It is it's April, isn't it? Um Yeah. Okay. I had to look at my watch. Yeah. So May's coming around the corner and that is the month that the at Memorial Day holiday falls in, I believe. Mm -hmm. So we've That's got right. with right. that, that we've got technically the beginning of summer begins with the Memorial Day holiday. It's the first three day weekend coming up, and I we've decided we're going to go take a little camping trip. Who's and decided? And why? We, uh, Jack and myself. Oh, your boyfriend? Yeah, because I I didn't think you were inviting me, but if you were even remotely thinking of it, don't. Why? Because I hate camping. What is wrong? No, I just do. I'm, with I'm being honest. I don't like camping. I never have. Now, see, I you I would probably never strike anybody as the camping type, but it once in a while I think it's fun to get to be one with nature. Oh, no, but see, the thing get, is, you're not one with nature. What are you talking about? When you go camping, you go to one of these dumb campgrounds where there's a bunch of loudmouth people on there. There's more noise at a campground than there is at your own house. That's not getting away from anything. That's being thrust into a whole bunch of humanity, and it's it's loud, and it's cacophonous, and it's annoying, and there's mosquitoes biting you. You can't sleep very well. The ground is hard. It's a hell. It's a... It's a living hell. can wetness I'm sorry, what did I say? What? What did you say? It's a cacophony. Oh. It means it's noisy. It's a bunch of dissonant... Sounds all clashing together and it drives you nuts. Where do you, where? Plus, there's no TV cable out there. <laughs> See, that's the point. Well, that's, that is kind of the point. I can't, I don't to like to do without that stuff. That you need to. No clocks, no telephone, no, no TV, no, no, no other oh. stimuli other than what you've got around oh, you. Oh man, is that, are you painting a horrible picture? If you're trying to sell camping, you've done exactly the opposite with me. I just can't, I'm not trying to sell it because it's not my, my first idea of getting away, but I don't, I think it's kind of fun once in a while, but why are you, you're so, you, you just really just dislike it. Well, here's the you, thing. I can see I, you your know, distaste. It goes all the way back to my, all over the room. it comes, it goes back to my childhood. It really As does. As does everything. What now? Well, what happened this time? Because, because my dad made me. Oh come on! Join the Boy Scouts. I he made me be a Boy Scout, and I just don't and have any. And what's so of wrong this, with that? I, <laughs> I don't have any skills of any kind. I couldn't tie knots. I couldn't cook. I couldn't identify any of the flowers. Uh, nothing. I couldn't even swim. I just, when I'd jump in the water, I'd go straight down. I could swim really good down. But that was just the only direction I mastered. So you really, you got no recognition or, well, here, or, or anything at the... My first experience at camping out was winter camp. Have you ever camped in the winter? Well, now, see, that's dumb. Well, it's, 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 it's 
crazy. It, it's insanity to go <laughs> camping in the winter. Just play Voluntarily go camping in the winter time. <laughs> all I can remember is my feet being frozen all the time. And so you'd put your, you'd have boots on and stuff, and you'd try to chop wood and keep the fire going. And other than that, there's nothing to do. There's nothing. You, pit, you pitch a tent, and you start a fire, and you stand around all day. That's all we did. Trying to earn our 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 frozen foot merit badge or something like that. And I remember my feet were so cold that you'd put them into the fire. You'd, you'd stand on the fire so that you could get your boots heated up. And then that, all I did was melt that neoprene rubber stuff on the soles of my boots. So my boots would be wrecked. And you'd smell like smoke. Because it doesn't matter where you stand at a campfire. The smoke's going to... I'm a smoke magnet. It comes right to me. <laughs> doesn't matter smoke where I'm standing. Smoke beauty, that's what they say. Well, that's what, I guess that's what they say. But it, it, so I just was... That was it. That started my camp. And I, and I just took an instant dislike to it. Now, Although you summer camp, me. summer camp was kind of fun, but see, then the summer camps I went to, they weren't really that primitive. You stayed in a pretty nice tent, and uh, there was a, a mess hall where you got you know meals prepared and stuff. Mm -hmm. So you weren't sitting eating beans and stuff and drinking <laughs> coffee on the campfire out of a can. Yeah. Now I'll tell you more about summer camp, which was okay, but. That's something you can do as you're a kid, and then you get it you get it over with. And an adult has no business being on a camp out, in my opinion. Hello, mother. Hello, father. Here I am at Camp Granada. I went hiking with Joe Spivey. He developed poison ivy. You remember Leonard Skinner. He got ptomaine poisoning last night after dinner. Yeah, Alan Sherman hit it on the head pretty well. Let's uh, check traffic with Ann Silverman. Oh, hi. Hi. Okay, I'm just Are, trying to figure out this accident. I don't think so. Come on. Uh, westbound on the West Seattle Freeway, exiting to Highway 99 repairs. The buzz on the weather, a uh, little rain, changing to a little more rain this afternoon. Highs of 55. I'm Ann Silverman on the buzz, 100.7 FM. Wait a minute. It stopped hailing. Guys are swimming. Guys are sailing, playing baseball. Gee, that's better. Fada, fada, kindly disregard this letter. 17 minutes past 7, the buzz, 100.7 FM. Yeah. Box with blinking lights and keyboard not working. You mean your computer is down? Hey, Will, is that what it's called? I always call it box with blinking lights. Nice political action committee. Twenty minutes past seven o'clock. This is the buzz on a Thursday morning, and uh, boy, I was just uh, telling stories about. Uh, I guess the the thing about camping is it's never turned out well for me. It's almost yeah. always been a bad experience. I think the thing, one from, thing... From getting there and putting the tent up to the day we leave, which can't <laughs> come soon enough for me. I think I, 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 don't, I like camping. I think it's fun. The only thing that, that, that I have a problem with is the lack of modern conveniences. It's just not... Yeah, not isn't it a great lot of fun taking a shower with a watering can? What that, a kick in the pants that, that and, is. And other biological needs... When you just need to have some private time to yourself, it's kooky. That's the have only thing I don't like. Have we progressed this far in civilization that we then voluntarily want to go out <laughs> and you know into the woods, go urinate on a tree, and take a shower with well, a watering can? Apparently, if you're a man, you do. Well, yeah, but may that, I remind you, you can that do that at home. The world is your bathroom. For crying out loud! <laughs> Camping trips from hell. Have you had them? Do you want to talk about them? Our numbers are 421-5070, that's uh, the local number, 421-5070, or toll-free 1-800-395-5150. Let's uh, talk to Steve, who's calling from Bothell. Bothell. That's, that's lovely downtown Bothell. Oh, you're downtown? Oh, yeah. I'm that's just kind of cruising through downtown by Alexander's Bothell. Restaurant there. Yeah. Yeah. Well, watch out at 12 o'clock on a Friday night. Yeah, uh, real quick, a uh, camping trip from hell. You, you brought back some pangs of uh, conscience with uh, talking about your father forcing mm -hmm. you into Boy Scouts. Well, yeah. I was one of those fathers. <laughs> yeah. And they, uh, they finally got me. They asked uh, me to uh, accompany about eight of the scouts on a, a camping trip to win their er, winter uh, survival badge. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you remember that? Yes. 
the top of Snoqualmie Pass uh, in 11 inches of snow came down that night. Oh, and, man. Uh, we're talking cutting uh, blocks of ice and making an igloo. Really? Yeah. You oh, did was, that? Oh, it was really fun. And, of course, I'd never done it in my life. And I was having to uh, show kids how to do something I never even had done before. Yeah. And, of course, we spent the entire night. It took us about six hours to get this thing up. And then I spent the entire night uh, wondering about what my liability would be if that eagle fell in on all six of us inside that. Uh, yeah, that's a lot of responsibility. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah, I always got that idea, that impression, too, that a lot of my scoutmasters didn't really know anything more about it than I did. You were entirely right. In fact, uh, like I said, the, uh, they were looking to me to show how to cut these things, and uh, I, I faked it pretty good, but um, I, we're lucky we all made it back. It's, as I say, it snowed 11 inches that night. Oh, in fact, the other guy that went with me had brought his camper up, and he snuck out about uh, 2 o'clock in the morning and hopped in his camper, and uh, I guess he had a couple drinks and, and left me in there along with these <laughs> stupid kids. So, anyway. That that uh, that took care of my uh, forcing yeah. my my young son into to uh, to be a man. So I decided to share that with you. That's nice. Thanks for not passing the experience along to him. Take care. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, that's the thing. If you you didn't have a good time at it when you were a kid, uh, then you shouldn't force your own kids to have it. Don't don't make them share the pain, the mm -hmm. agony. Now, of course, I'm I'm being hyperbolic here. I obviously I know that there's a lot of good things about scouting and camping and that sort of thing but i just don't you know winter camp that's a nutty that's kooky you know what happened to me one summer camp mm. a lot of things but one time and you were talking about you know the, the lack of readily available public facilities mm -hmm. i was walking along this nature trail it was a camp mcquala it was a boy scout camp on 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 a lake beautiful lake crescent lake and i'm walking along this nature path yeah, which a lot of the, the different, there were a whole bunch of different troops there. Not just, not just my troop, but a whole bunch of different ones in different camps. And I'm just tooling along the, uh, nature trail. And when, ironically enough, the call of nature comes upon me powerfully. Huh. And I mean, I, you know, when you're a kid, you gotta go now. Mm -hmm. You can't say, oh. Yeah, did you say you were with a pack of children or? I was by myself. By I was walking by myself on the nature trail. And I had to, well, as we used to say, go back door. Mm -hmm. I had a number two in mm -hmm. the worst way. <laughs> and here I am, and I'm a, I'm a good distance from any uh, outhouse or anything, latrines or whatever, and I have to go really bad. So This is fascinating. I, I'm going to try to make this as delicate as I can. <laughs> so I know that on one of the things on the nature trail is a, a plant called skunk cabbage. You ever seen skunk cabbage? Yes, I have. It's big, uh -huh. broad leaves. Yes. So immediately I said, that will work. I can use that. <laughs> Gotta find me a skunk cabbage. Yeah, I need something because I, you know, I don't have, I don't have anything with we, me. Yeah, I got okay, you. Okay, you know what I'm saying. Gotcha. So I cry, so I go out into the, uh, out into the patch of skunk cabbage a little. It's about, I'm probably about 15 feet off of the trail itself. So I go out there and uh, lower my drawers, and and that's always hard to do too, you know, because you gotta, you yes. know, you don't want it to fall inside your shorts. I mean, you want to make sure <laughs> it gets it clears. And you know. not only that, which is probably the most important thing, is the whole balance thing. Yeah, and then and then there are flies immediately all over the place, so you want to get away from it as quick as you can. <laughs> So the I need did. Need to cover up is 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 urgent. Yeah. So anyway, I don't want to go into that. But anyway, so I did that, and then so I so I just grabbed myself a big leafy batch of skunk cabbage. <laughs> when I hear coming down the trail, uh, do, 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 here boys, now let's come to this portion of the nature trail. I go, oh no, another troop is coming, and I've got my pants around my ankles, holding a big piece of skunk cabbage. <laughs> Not the most dignified no. position. <laughs> and I so I hit the ground. I just lie down on the ground, so that just I, wait a minute, I, wait a minute, with your pants around with your with my ankle. pants around my ankles. I didn't have time to pull them up, and I and I didn't want to because you know I wasn't done. <laughs> so I'm li I'm lying out in this field of skunk cabbage, just praying to God <laughs> that my buttocks are not tall enough to be sticking out over the skunk cabbage. But I don't know for sure. If they are or not, I can't check. I'm just, I'm just lying there praying. And of course, 
And boys, uh, this is a uh, a plant called skunk cabbage. <laughs> because if you uh, if you smell it up close, it smells a little bit like a skunk. But it uh, it uh, I don't really know how it got its name. But it's got these big, broad, leafy uh, parts. T go ahead and pick some of it out there, Freddy. And so, I mean, oh God, Freddy, don't come out here very far. <laughs> And Freddie goes, and so you, I don't know who Freddie was because I never saw any of these faces. He goes out there a few feet and he starts, you know, ripping off some some of the cabbage. <laughs> and then Freddie kind of goes, uh, wait, uh. What is it, Freddie? Oh, nothing. And he comes back and then they, and then they, and the troop moves on and I never know if Freddie saw my butt in, or sticking out there and said, huh. <laughs> And maybe when he got back to their camp, he said, oh, There is another plant I saw out there I wanted to ask you about, sir. That's about it on that story. There's a little more, but it's really not worth telling. I think that's enough. In 59, we took a little hike with our scout and master down to Lake and Negan Mike. This is the Buzz 100.7 FM. Love to talk to you about your camping experiences. Stick around. This is the Buzz. And I was mad because me mother set me up here. <laughs> Did your roof survive winter's weather? E4060. This is Charles Osgood. If you want a great start to your day, try Whole Grain Total. His total is the only leading cereal with 100% of 12 vitamins and minerals. Heart attack. He was only as directed.